Is there a war against police? This is the spin that uh, certain politicians, the narrative that they're trying to push uh, <laughs> to sort of quiet the, the fact that we're asking for police accountability. So now they're coming out with there is a war on police, which there's no evidence showing that there has been any more uh, assaults uh, or deaths of police in the past whatsoever. But uh, so this was in The Guardian, The Hill, the ACLU. Uh, there is an act called the Protect and, uh, Protect and Serve Act that would make police a protected class and violence against them a hate crime. So um, <laughs> from the outset, this type of legislation is completely unnecessary because it already exists. This already exists. And what they're trying to do with this is just to um, make, set the narrative that there is a war on police. So uh, police already have laws protecting them at both the federal and state levels. These bills serve only to further the myth that there is a war against police happening and that simply is not the case. Calling for uh, police accountability is not the same thing as waging war against police, but it is viewed as such by those who uh, uh, think that questioning police is wrong and that uh, this act would actually give them uh, complete impunity. They could do basically whatever they want. So U.S. senators introduced a bill on Tuesday that would make certain kinds of violence against law enforcement qualify as hate crimes under federal law. The Senate Protect and Serve Act would make a, it a crime to knowingly cause bodily injury to any person or attempt to do so because of the actual or perceived status of the person as a law enforcement officer, which is nearly identical to the language that accompanies hate crime laws. Under the law, injuring or attempting to injure a law enforcement officer could be punished by up to 10 years in prison. Senator Orrin Hatch, please, we, please, we need to get rid of him. Lead sponsor uh, of the Senate bill said in a statement that the legislation makes clear that no criminal will be able to escape justice when he singles out and assaults those who put on a badge every day to keep us safe. Orrin Hatch, dust yourself off, clear out the cobwebs. Orrin Hatch uh, is the, he is on my shit list for uh, Grand Staircase Escalante and Bears Ears, uh, pushing for that among other things that he does in Utah. Um, he is, <clears throat> he is the lowest of the low. Uh, Kanea Bennett, Legislative Counsel at the American Civil Liberties Union, called the Senate bill nothing short of offensive to historically persecuted and marginalized communities across this country. The Senate version was introduced by Orrin Hatch and Heidi Heitkamp. The popularity of the bills followed a small number of high-profile targeted targeted killings of law enforcement. The incidents in New York, Dallas, and Baton Rouge occurred as the police killings uh, of America, especially on our black men, black men drew national focus. So there were three incidents that uh, police officers were killed on duty. Three in which they're trying to blow this up as police are under attack. There is a war against police. Three. Now, how often do we hear about unarmed people being shot by police officers? Three. Uh, in 2014, two NYPD officers were shot in their parole car by a gunman who made very anti-police remarks on social media, including saying that he was putting wings on pigs today. In the summer of 2016, two shootings in Dallas and Baton uh, Rouge killed five and three officers respectively. In both cases, the shooters left behind material suggesting that they were spurred by animosity towards police. Um, so they're taking these small, uh, these incidences uh, and they're 
pushing this whole narrative that now we need stronger wars against people who try to assault police officers, um, which they already have. So uh, the Senate version makes police a protected class, something that up until now was reserved for marginalized groups because crimes against them often went unacknowledged, uninvestigated, and unpunished. There are no statistics showing that police are in any more danger now than they have been previously. There are no stati statistics that show police are being attacked or otherwise harmed at higher rates right now than they were recent uh, in the past. And there is nothing to back the belief that police need even further special protection under any additional laws. So exactly what constitutes violence against a police officer. This is where it gets rather scary. I did a report uh, two or three weeks ago about how ICE was lying to people about the stats that they were releasing on how many ICE officers were being assaulted. Um, <laughs> that was absurd. And that was obviously to push the narrative that we need a wall, that there are bad hombres, that uh, um, it's fear mongering. Uh, what they had done in that um, case was if a police officer was hit with a plastic water bottle in the head or the chest, um, that was considered an assault. And that was considered three assaults because it was the person throwing the bottle, the bottle itself, and the police officer who were being uh, counted as separate assaults. Just watch that video. Um, so they were counting things as assaults where police officers were not getting hurt at all. They were counting things as assaults even if a person had a stick in, uh, in their hand and did not use it on the ICE agents, they were still recording that as an assault. So in this case, what could happen? Um, I mean, these people, it, it's punishable. Assaulting a police officer would be punishable for up to 10 years in prison. How often do you think that police officers are going to bend the truth, if not break the truth, to put more people in prison? And again, and again, everything we're seeing lately is just furthering mass incarceration. And it's, it's really, it's very scary. And I, I feel like this is just another piece of legislation that they're trying to put in place, number one, to um, take emphasis off of uh, police accountability and fear monger that police are being attacked, but also to put people in prison who do not belong there. So um, the author of the, uh, the piece uh, in The Hill said, uh, if a police officer goes to grab your arm and you instinctively pull away, your nails accidentally scratch him or her as you do so, are you now guilty of a hate crime against a police officer? Are you now going to be put in jail for 10 years? Um, so how and when will these laws be enforced? And against who? Uh, again, uh, Kanyea Bennett, the legislative counsel at the Washington Legislative Office at the American Civil Liberties Union said in a statement, the bill serves no purpose other than to further dangerous and divisive narratives that there is a war on police. The House creation of a new criminal statute for off offenses against police is superfluous uh, given the many existing federal and state laws that protect law enforcement officers already, the Senate's version is nothing short of offensive to historically persecuted and marginalized communities across this country. Federal hate crime laws were passed to correct the centuries 
uh, of an action and injustice that too often was the response to violence based on immutable traits of identities, including rape, gender, uh, race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, and disability. The definition under no possible interpretation could include being a member of law enforcement. Congress should vote this down quickly and decisively. So again, uh, hate crimes were put into place for minority groups who were not uh, getting a fair investigation, who were not getting a, a fair trial, and now they're, they're classifying police officers as a minority group. The ACLU, along with Human Rights Watch, the Leadership Conference of Civil and Human Rights, and the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund wrote a letter to Senate asking that senators oppose the introduction and co-sponsorship of this bill, writing in part, Extending hate crimes uh, protections to law enforcement officers is a profoundly inappropriate and misguided proposal for several, several reasons. First, police already have su uh, substantial protections under federal and state law, rendering the bill uh, superfluous. Second, hate crime laws are intended to extend protection to historically persecuted groups. Um, I already said that. Anyways, um, they say that uh, there is a war on police, which is not only untrue, but an unhelpful and dangerous narrative to uplift. Fourth, uh, bills similar to protect and serve have been introduced uh, to states around the country, including the Blue Lives Matters bills. Uh, they appear to be political response to the growing nationwide movement for police accountability in the face of continued killings and assaults of unarmed African Americans. Therefore, this bill is divisive and will have a negative impact on relationships between law enforcement and the communities they serve. No kidding. Um, there are already communities all across the country that are being over-policed and this kind of, of a law is going to make the situations so much worse. I was at a Black Lives Matter, uh, covering a Black Lives Matter um, press conference the other day. And I was speaking to a woman who said that she has a 12 year old son. Um, and she lives uh, in a minority uh, area, city, Buffalo, New York. And she told me that she tells him when he's walking to school, if he sees a police officer to put his head down to direct his eye line away from the police officer because she's afraid that he's going to get in trouble with them for absolutely nothing. So her son, literally when he sees a police officer, looks down. Uh, another woman there told me that when people in the neighborhood have an emergency, the last person they will call is a police officer. They will call their neighbors they will call family members. They will not call police officers. That's how bad the relationship between police officers and uh, people in these neighborhoods is. And yes, they are shooting and killing people all the time in Buffalo, New York, just alone. Um, they have these illegal stops where they're stopping cars and they're, they're checking checkpoints, they're checking people uh, with no reason. They are saying that they're checking for drunk drivers. And this is all day, every day, two o'clock uh, PM, a checkpoint, five blocks down, another checkpoint. And people have been, uh, a woman was dragged out of her car and shot at one of the checkpoints. We shouldn't have to live in a country where the people who protect us are the people who we need protection from. Thank you.